ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next guest speaker, Mr. Shantanu Kumar, Director Communications and Media Solutions, HP. I would now like to call upon Professor D.S. Kadam, Director of Projects and Humanity Affairs, to please present the guest with class. Sir is a project management professional and leadership institute master class. Sir certified from Project Management Institute, Pennsylvania, USA. He is a B.E. Computer Science from Pune University. He has also done postgraduate diploma in advanced computing from CDAC Pune and has done mobile computing from Indian Institute of Technology. Sir has also done MBA in IT and Finance. Talking about his professional experience, he has experience in IT industry on software and in wide varieties of domain. Sir has offside and offshore experience for domestic and international clients like CMD USA, TGG USA and Reliance Geo Infocom India. Sir is an international award winner for Volunteer Leader of the Year 2008, Asia Pacific Region. He got recognized at leadership meeting in Delhi, in October 2008, for his outstanding commitment and leadership. Now I would request Mr. Shantru Omari to address the campaign. Sir. Mr. Dwele Prof, so I will not say good morning. I will say good afternoon, friends. Good afternoon, sir. Now, I want to see whether you are uh, listening or you are sleeping. Good afternoon, that, sir. That's much better. Well, uh, today our topic is a learning form of cargo leader, but uh, I am not going to teach you anything here. I am just going to make you aware of few things, and then from there, you have to explore your own. Here I'm not talking about you know, challenges in your business environment. So this is the first challenge as a corporate uh, we face. We need the students coming from college as a finished product. That means they should be able to work on the driven. Those days are gone that when you join and you get three months, six months training and then you become productive. Those days are gone. Now company requires that you know, the day you join, you should be able to do the work. So this is a huge shift from old days to, you know, the current market situation. So, please make sure that, you know, become finished product before you join the organization, so that, you know, you are to work. Is there any problem with the projector? Then as an organization, uh, this is the next uh, problem we face, getting right skill resources at the uh, right time. And uh, just to, to share with you, even uh, people like uh, VPs and CEOs, they spend 20% of time on uh, getting right resources with the right skills. It may be coming as a shock to you, but that's the fact in the business environment. So just try to understand how much big issue is this. Then there is a more of a competition in, in your businesses. Most of the clients, they want to get more of them in a less price. For that reason, there is more competition. And all the time, you cannot do a better work with the less price. So, how to basically balance that? Then customers are demanding, slash, I have written unrealistic. My experience so far in the uh, career is that, you know, Indian customers are uh, unrealistic, demanding they understand, but one has to be also realistic. So Indian market is really different than you know if I compare with other countries. Then most of the clients would require quick turnaround time 
if they tell some problem, you should be able to fix there and there itself. You cannot tell that, oh, I will go back, I will check, I will tell you tomorrow. Those days are gone. More focus on agile than waterfall model, it comes when you, know, you are working in the systems or IT department, the way you do your software development, things are changing. Agile is more preferred nowadays than waterfall model. In waterfall, like you do requirement, design, coding, but those days are again gone. And you must be noticing that you know, there is a rapid change when it comes to technology space. During three months, six months, you will find some new technology. So how to you know, go up with that? Rapid changes in a product and services offered by company. Because technology is changing, so your products has to be changed, your services has to be changed. If you don't change, you will not survive. And then, as you know, current the global economic situation. So because of that also is a big challenge for most of the companies. Any question now before I move on to the next slide? And I want this session to be in right? to not just like a one-way communication, always I'll finish my presentation in this five minutes. Any question before I go to the next slide? Basically, you take a small chunk of a work, still there will be a requirement, still there will be a design, but the way you do work is a different. You don't try to create documents. You don't have separate designers. There are no separate testers. Developers who also do testing, testing people will also do development. So it is a change of mindset altogether. But the time required to execute it would be higher than this. Not really. Because you take a small piece, you make it a working one, and then you take a next small piece. So that you know, at least something is a deliverable. Because in the traditional waterfall, what happens you take six months, and after six months, you get a lot of surprises, things are not working. So you have lost time, you have lost money. Any other question? Any other question? I see some students still sleeping out there. I can see their faces. Or should I uh, you know, do something to wake you up? Then I'll start asking questions and I'll figure out that no one is to answer. If I see someone is sleeping out there.
As a marketing student. Yes, sir. Means as a sales or marketing student. See, your things are different. When I'm saying a realistic, uh, it comes when you, know, you are working there as a program manager or you are managing the delivery. But your challenge is being a marketing and sales uh, person would be different. So there your negotiation skills matters. Because, yes, I know uh, unrealistic in the case of marketing and sales, someone is asking low price which you cannot offer. So in that case, your negotiation skills will matter. But when I am talking about earlier speak, that was actually for development work. Hope you hope I have answered your question. <coughs> but in your case, it will be your negotiation skills. So what if the negotiation skills doesn't actually work? Because some customers are actually so much idated and they want this thing to be done on time, means before time usually. So how can that be done? Yeah, so uh, again, I think as a marketing uh, sales guy, uh, you got to negotiate and uh, you got to tell them why it cannot be done. You, you got to maybe tell them some case study, why it cannot be done. How concrete data so that they are not arguing. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Adarish so you mean uh, when somebody has uh, stopped giving the training? Oh uh, yes, sir. That is, that is well, uh, the, uh, having said that, not all companies have stopped. Okay. Some company, and if you are lucky, you may get training. Okay. But if you are unlucky, you may not get training. Okay. But is, that does not mean that you know all companies have stopped giving the training. Some company uh, who can you know have patience, have time, have money to spend, will uh, conduct trainings, or or else some company will not. So it depends upon company also. And in what situation they are, that also matters. Okay. So what is your personal opinion on this? Like should training be given or not? If uh, you are finished product, why do you need a training? Okay. Okay. If uh, I get a, one student and another student, you are finished product, another person is not finished product, to whom I will say? Fast work or more work? Uh, or quality work? Uh, this is a quality of work wins over other parameters. Because any company can survive only by doing quality work, by giving better service, by giving better products. So those who are the things will keep you know. Okay, I will go to the next one, or then we will talk on this slide only. Yeah, so this I want to show you. I don't know whether you can see it clearly. How technological evolution is happening? Uh, right, you know, earlier, in the older days, TCP IP programming was very famous. People used to just write uh, client server programming. Then uh, email came. So, a lot of focus was on uh, email communication. Then, World Wide Web came. So, a lot of uh, information was uh, exchanged on uh, World Wide Web. Then e-business came or e-commerce came, then grid computing. I don't know how many of you have heard of the grid computing. How many of you know grid computing? Raise your hands. Surprise me. Okay. How many have heard you uh, heard about the cloud computing? So before that it was a grid computing. Just Google it, uh, you will get what, what is the grid computing. I don't have to spend time on that. But just to tell you, uh, or just to give you a hint, it was basically using multiple servers. Having grid of multiple servers, that was actually grid computing. You were only two kinds of cloud computing. And uh, even after cloud computing, now there is more focus on mobile computing. Most of the apps are now developed on mobile, then you know, e commerce websites are developed. I will always get this question how e commerce is doing in India? I would say instead of e commerce, most of the focus is now on 
PM Commerce. PM Commerce is taking back seat. What do you do nowadays on your website? Same thing is done on your mobile. So there is more focus on mobile than e-commerce. Okay. So next the slide I have brought as you know what industry expects from academia. So if you ask me only two things, your behavioral competencies, those are your personality traits, and functional competencies, that is your basic knowledge base. And again, I am repeating, we need students from coming from college rather than finished product. We should have to go from a day one. This is what basically any industry works from academia. Going extra mile and doing out of box thinking. But as you know, if I tell you something you do to just that, anyone will do, right? So, your own thinking, going to extra mile and out of, out of box thinking can make you differentiate. Sincerity and dedication in your work. And most importantly, whatever work is given to you, you should love that work. Just don't do work for no sake of doing it. Then you will not be able to post you know, results as expected by the organization. Well, I mean, I know I was talking about this, you know, we need to finish, finish work. Uh, I've been talking on this subject since years, and a lot of media coverage was also given on that. I don't know whether you can read the underlying text, but uh, I will read out for you. I you know midday took my interview on this subject. So this argument is happening uh, between you know education institutes and you know corporate, whether industry is fast paced or uh, your service is out of date, that is the reason students are not getting job or some other reason. Or uh, in, uh, institutes blame basically industry that they don't tell us what exactly they want and that is the reason they cannot meet you know, students as a finished product. So yes, this argument is happening since years and years. So that's what I told to midday when you know, they took my interview. Then like uh, then the city class interviewed me on the same subject, DNA interviewed me on the same subject. So basically what uh, I told to city class that you know instead of you know blaming each other, corporate and you know, issues, they should come together and have some concrete plan to make students as a finished product. There is no point you know blaming each other. And then there's a concept of a finishing school. Every college tries to say that you know our college is a like you know college where you know student will come as a finished product but not really. So that is that word is becoming like a hot cake and some people are just misusing it, but actually students are not coming as a finished product. So that warning have been given again and again to all the colleges, don't misuse that word. When you say that we should avoid to see that quality. Yeah. Then here I'm giving one the statistics. Every year in our India, about 60,000 students pass engineering and how many students get job? You will be asking only 10%. Why is that? Again, there is a huge mismatch what industry wants and you know, what they are trained on. Maybe their syllabus are outdated or there could be you know, a number of reasons. So here I am talking about the few general competencies. Like uh, if you remember my first slide, that you know company requires only two things, your general competency and functional competency. So let me tell you what general competencies generally we expect. Your leadership skills, learning and organizing skills. Some people, they know how to do their work, do their you know, work own, but you know, how, how do I develop others working in my team? That also matters. So this skill is also important. Working first yourself or doing your own job, that most of the most of us do it, but then developing others also matters. Then your communication skills, customer orientation. What do you understand by customer orientation? You are MBA student, so you must know it. What does that mean? Those, those are just words. I want to know more. No, that is not the customer orientation. 
Any other junior student out here? You know, Master, you are a viewer shop. What is your customer orientation? Yes. Not really. No. <coughs> Maybe a subset of that, but uh, not what I am uh, expecting. Any other business will look here. Yet other students are sitting here, right? That's what I heard from uh, Gigi, that you know, yet other students are sitting here. So, any, any billion student out here. Customer orientation would be when a business or a company is focused with the perception and perspectives the customer wants and so that the customer is happy. So, keeping customer as the main focus, keeping customer happy, happiness as the main question and then, yeah, so how you make your customer happy? By, uh, so basically, first thing would be analyzing the requirements, expectations of the customer. If the customer expects to be happy to deliver. No, or, those, those days are gone. You are, uh, you are uh, back in history. Those okay. days are gone. Understanding customer requirement, those days are gone. So customer delight could be an other thing that we as managers could play, play a role on. No. Still you are in a good history. Things have changed. Things have changed over the period of time. See, you, all the companies, there are so many IT companies. If you, you say that you know, I want to do requirement analysis, that any company would do. Then what is your depreciation point? Yes, sir, value could be one aspect of our organization. So it has to be the core competency of the company that like, plays a role. Okay. Uh, well, if you take your time for me to uh, make you understand what I will to just uh, tell you simply, customer orientation is basically understanding your customer business. And instead of uh, customer telling you requirement, you should be able to understand their business, their domain, and you should be able to tell them, you do this, if you do this, how it will affect their enterprise customer and how they can, uh, you know, give better services to their enterprise clients. So instead of customer telling you, you should be able to tell them. That, that is the customer orientation. So as I said, those days are gone when customers are telling you requirement and you are then delivering it. Before customer tells you, you should be able to tell them you do this. Then only you understand their business. Hope I am mean, making some sense here. <laughs> then influencing. Working in a one team, you may work very well as an individual. But then working in a team, that matters a lot. Result driven. You may say that you know, I have worked 11 hours, 12 hours, not counted. What you have delivered, that is counted. One person may deliver the same thing in a 4 hours. I, I will like that person when you are working for 12 hours. Adaptability. You need to adapt the, with the situation, changes happening in the organization. Self-development, you should be also, you know, focus on your own self-development. Innovation. I think innovation you must be doing, right? What is the innovation? Introducing new ideas. Okay, that is innovation? No. My answers will be always different, so you will always hear a lot of surprises from me. My, my, because my answers are not from book. Okay, so this is a subset of that. What is? But I am asking what is the definition of innovation? Okay, if you have a new idea, is it called as innovation? No. 
So when, we, when it becomes illusion, I'm looking for that answer. Has to be implemented. Yes, that's the right answer. Because everyone has an idea. What is that idea cannot be implemented. Then it becomes illusion. I'm sorry, I don't have chocolate to give. Generally, I do that in my session. Sorry about that. Then, analytical thinking, strategic thinking, so we have talked about you know, behavioral skills, now here I am talking about interpersonal skills, so again team skills, communication skills, safe motivation, dedication and commitment, result driven, then I don't know whether you have heard about the uh, EQ, uh, IQ, EQ and SQ. You may have heard of uh, IQ, but have you heard of uh, EQ and SQ before? Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir. So tell me what is uh, IQ and what is EQ? What is the difference between IQ and EQ? How many people heard of, uh, before of uh, SQ? So raise your hand. SQ. IQ you know, okay, you, you may be knowing because it may be in your syllabus, but SQ I am interested to know. How many people know about SQ? Uh, sir, I know about EQ, I will tell you EQ what is EQ. EQ is actual edge, uh, mental edge of our actual edge. Mm -hmm. That's the EQ. Okay, and what is SQ? SQ I don't know. I am hearing uh, first time here. And so one more question is there for you. Can I ask you or after the session? If I can answer, I will answer. Okay. Sir, you said uh, you want a finished product. Uh, so different companies have different verticals and different verticals. Construction company, construction domain will be a, a, a different rather than from a, a software company, from manufacturing company. And uh, so in quality something, same thing is for. So, uh, how do you expect to be a, a finished product? And if you expect a finished product, then what is the difference between a student being introduced, introduced uh, working, started working from a first day, and a guy who is working with you, your company 10 years with you? Then what is the difference between that uh, experience, 10, is, 10 years experience guy and this pressure guy, if you expect the finished product? See, when I am in this work, I am not saying that no. I am not saying that you, know, you work like a 10 years experience person. I know you are a patient. So, for every level, there are different set of expectations. It is not that you know, I will compare you to the 10 years. So, that will not be there. Because sir, I will argue here, here on that point that when if a vice president switch off, switch off to another position, he will take some time to settle down in a new company because he has to um, know the company culture and company, how does the company, because every company will not work on set. Uh, same culture, different management will be there. So it will take some absorbing time at least. He will not be getting trained. Senior vice, if, if he is, uh, somebody is getting senior vice president job in some company, XYZ company, he will not be getting trained. But he has to, he, at least he has to introduce for three months. Three months at least it will take. Not required. Those days are gone. Because those, I, those days are gone. Sir, because I, I those days are gone. Let me give my own example. Okay. Uh, before joining HP, I was working with the network as a CIO. And you will be surprised to know, before I joined the company, I had a plan for whole one year what I am going to do with the network. So then, uh, that Be before joining the company, I talked to at least 10 guys to understand the company, to understand their processes, and I presented to their leadership team, to their advisory team, what changes I am going to make in a network once I join, what I will do in first week, what I will do in second week. So even before joining, I did that job. So then, uh, how do you believe? Uh, how much do you uh, believe in switching the jobs in uh, one year, within the one year? Because uh, if I am ready, then I can uh, switch on, switch, uh, keep uh, uh, switching on the jobs. From one company to another company and from one company to another company like that. But uh, why you are not uh, no. for, for increment, everybody works for increment. For better money. Okay. Don't think you need to work that way. The, that formula would not work all the time. You are not the nature, you will pay in HR injury, you will pay a lot of hobby. That's what, that's what I'm saying. So, no HR person would uh, like that you know, your hobby job just for increment. Oh, okay, thanks sir. You, you may get increment, staying in same company, by doing things differently. You don't have to switch. Okay. Sir, sir, SQ is the ability to 
communicate along with others. Yeah, anyway, I was right on that, but I want to change your knowledge on that. I am going to write on that. I will talk on that more. <laughs> then your uh, problem was solving your capabilities. That you that comes under your interpersonal skills. Okay, I think I am not talking a lot. So now here I am going to show you two videos, and purposefully I have written in minutes. So you know that you know videos are not too long. And uh, these videos are not for fun. When I am showing, I have some purpose. I am going to ask questions. So please be watchful for that. No, I didn't check your address. I think your address is not working. Send her in. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. President. Oh, Condoleezza, nice to see you. What's happening? Well, Mr. President, I have the report here about the new leader in China. Wait, Condi, lay it on me. Mr. President, who is the new leader in China? Well, that's what I want to know. Well, that's what I'm telling you, Mr. President. Well, that's what I'm asking you, Condi. Who is the new leader of China? Yes. I mean the feller's name. Hugh. The guy in China. Hugh. The new leader of China. Hugh. The Chinaman. Hugh is leading China, Mr. President. What are you asking me for? I'm telling you, Hugh is leading China. Well, I'm asking you, Condi, who is leading China? That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Will you or will you not tell me the name of the new leader of China? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Arafat is in China. I thought he was in the Middle East. That's correct, sir. Then who's in China? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is in China? No, sir. Then who is? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Honey, you're starting to piss me off now. It's not because you're black, neither. I need to know the name of the new leader of China, so I want you to get me the Secretary General of the United Nations on the phone. Coffee, N.N.? No, thanks. And Connie, call me George. Stop with that Ebonics crap. You want coffee? No. You don't want coffee? No, but now you mention it, I could use a glass of milk. And then get me the U.N. Yes, sir. Not yes, sir. The guy at the United Nations. Coffee. Milk. Will you please make that call? And call who? Well, who's the guy at the UN? No, who is the guy in China? Will you stay out of China? Yes, sir. And stay out of the Middle East. Just get me the guy at the UN. Coffee. All right, with cream and two sugars. Now get on the phone. Hello, Rice here. Rice, good idea. And get a couple of egg rolls too, Connie. Maybe we should send some to the guy in China and the Middle East. Can you get Chinese food in the Middle East? I don't know. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what about 
communication and media is used. If person would have been face to face, he would have been different, right? Okay. I have a next video. And uh, in this video, I, I will be needing uh, more messages from you, what you understand. This was just to show you about the permission scale, so I'm not taking much time on that. But the next video is uh, really important. I need at least 50 messages from this crowd, from this one video. Can I get from 800 students 50 messages? Yes, Let's try that. So, sir, from this video, you came to know that the basic, uh, the base of a coordinated efforts are teamwork and they have to be shared values amongst the team members. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, every member in the team should focus on the common goal rather than individual goal. And this video was focusing more on energy and synergy. 
Mm-hmm. So means when two people are coming together, they are giving a different result, which is oriented towards the common goal of the organization. So which this is what I learned from this means. Yeah, one message one from one student always give one student first or then other student will not get opportunity. <coughs> direction, focusing goals, mm-hmm. and positive attitude, that is the interpersonal skill, that if I'm in a team, and if I'm not having a proper communication with my team members, I will not win. My team will not succeed, and a proper coordination, which includes an interpersonal skill also. And everyone should be a leader in a team. It should not be that uh, one leader, we consist of one leader, but everyone should be treated equally. Any other student wants to give a try? of the role that is that the person has to perform in the organization, like the policies, procedures, uh, the way he has to perform and the common towards the achievement of the goal. The, basically the clarity that of the role. Yeah, clarity of your own role and also understanding of others' role. Yeah. So that you know there is no misery. Yes. But don't forget Dino, I am telling again and again. You may not have heard about the Dino Commission, but you Google it, there is something called the Dino Commission also. Any other message? Okay, let's move on because I'm uh, taking time or so. I think we have to take 15 minutes more and then I want to give uh, 
uh, some time also for question and answers if you have any other question and answers. Apart from my presentation, so I will give you that opportunity also. So I will move on to the next slide. Yeah, uh, we are talking about IQ, EQ and ESQ. So IQ, EQ you already know. So social question is basically communication skill and uh, building relation. It is required for uh, people who are into specialization of marketing and sales. For them it is uh, really important. Then uh, here I am listing down some leadership qualities, value and ethics, trust, trust for success, strategic thinking, you should be tolerant and able to work with others, quality thinking, risk taker, creative self starter, you should be change agent, you should be able to change the things fast, you should be able to influence the people and be visionary, have some vision, short term and long term goal to be called as a leader. And then uh, if you remember my first slide, what industry expects from academia, they were only two. One was behavioral, we covered a behavioral, now it is coming to your uh, basically functional one. So if you are a sales guy, you need to be very good in the selling skills, commission and negotiation skills if you are in sales and purchase. If you are into HR, then your people management, change management and organization you should be able to manage properly. And if you are into marketing, then networking, commissions and negotiation, negotiation skills will matter. And you need to have some uh, function or domain skills, like uh, either you should be very good in the SCM or HR or sales marketing or IT or operation. You need to have some uh, functional domain knowledge. So these were basically functional competencies. Yeah, this is an important slide. I don't know how much important for you, but I think this is important for you. So these are the, some of the parameters uh, I will assess if I take your interview or for that matter you will take your interview. Uh, so take uh, these parameters uh, seriously, uh, if uh, at least me or uh, my organization takes your interview, we will judge you on each and every parameter. So exactly this is the sheet I will be having in my hand and I will be asking you some brilliant smart questions to judge you on these parameters. you have any questions on these parameters? Because as I said these parameters are very important for you to crack the interview. Apart from your GD and aptitude, these, these are the important parameters. Any question on any parameter? Because as I said, these are the exact parameters in your organization generally will try to assess you. Sir, good morning. Good afternoon. I would like to know on flexibility and adaptability. So sometimes for any manager, he's got a routine, he's got a plan that he has to execute. But there are times that because of volatility and uncertainty, he has to change, he has to shift. So how can flexibility, flexibility is one point that someone wants to improve? What factors should we put in? You have to basically want to difference between the adaptability and flexibility, right? So flexible means let's say you are working in a Java technology, tomorrow I ask you to work in a dot should be flexible to him and accept okay, I have to try a new skill. Adaptability means there will be always changes in the organization. You got to adapt to the ch changes, understand why those changes are happening in organization. Let it be organization change, process change, changes could be anything. So you need to adapt those changes quickly. Thank you. Any other question on any, any, any other parameter? Drive to achieve. I'm sorry? Yeah, right to achieve is that basically it should not happen that you know, I tell you something, you do your job and you go home. Basically out of box thinking, going extra mile and you should have that desire that you know I want to achieve something. So instead of your manager telling you if you do, if you basically go extra mile and you do achieve more results, that's what is required. And you should think of, you know, as I said, not you know in terms of a number of working hours, what basically you have produced, end of the day, that matters. Okay, I am coming to my last slide and then I want to give you opportunity to ask questions and you can ask any question, even though it is not there in my presentation. So I am uh, trying to give you some advice. Uh, focus on theoretical and practical knowledge. You may ask why, five times you don't understand. How have your foundations strong? I was talking to 
someone in the, you know, Bharat Sarkar Academy, that you know, you are telling that you know, do address this issue uh, with the students. That you know, many students they just want to pass exam, but that is not sufficient. Your foundation has to be strong. If your foundation is strong, you can build anything on top of that. So focus on building your foundation strong. Learn new things. That may not be in your syllabus, but if you know something new is coming, they will be new skills, new technology. Put more efforts to you know, learn those skills. Don't you blame your institute. Institute cannot put anything, everything in a syllabus, right? So you got to put extra effort to learn the new skills. Have a bit of reading or some technical magazines or you know, whichever area you are working, if you are into sales or marketing, read magazines in your domain so that you know, you know what's happening in that area. Get exposed to real world industry, what and how they basically do work. Focus on your own personality and your soft skills. This is more important. Do real projects, your major or minor projects. I have seen students copying uh, projects of the previous years and submitting to college just for the sake of submitting. Then you will not learn anything. Be disciplined and uh, punctual. Be flexible and have patience. I have seen students, they want to achieve a lot. So I find many students, I have been already interacting with so many students from different colleges. Patience is an issue. Participate in college activities, like you, know, you have organized this HR meet. If you participate in college activities, you will learn organizing skills, leadership skills, planning skills. So do participate in those uh, college activities. It will help you to develop your skills only. Connect your, uh, with the senior people from the industry. And meet people from industry, make, their, their, make them as a, your mentor and coach. Uh, I have seen that you know, some students, they say, we don't need mentor, but let me tell you, you be at any level, even CEOs in the company have mentor. It will be service to you, but I am telling you, you be at any level, you need a mentor. Even CEO of the companies have a mentor. I have my own mentor, I have five mentors. You, you said your own mentor will guide you, will show you the right direction. Don't think that you don't need mentor, you person in career needs a mentor to right direction and to guide you. Because I have some students, they have got into that attitude problem. I am getting you know, enough knowledge in my institute, I don't need any mentor. Okay, so that was, as I said, uh, my last slide. Uh, now, house is open for uh, questions and as I said, you can ask any question that is in your training in your own mind. Even though it is not in my presentation, you can ask me any question. I will try to answer. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Devan Rajpur. I'm from uh, IT Finance University Batch. A product of FP, that is FP Spectrum. Ultra Slim, Lightweight, i7 processor, 512 GB space, 3 GB RAM, etc. If we consider the specification, you can get the same uh, specification laptop from a Dell or Sony, etc. So, they are charging somewhere around 60K, 70K. Now, here comes the reason, a point. At the same time, HP is charging 135,000 rupees for the same laptop. What is the reason behind charging such a high value for the same laptop? Is it the only designing matters or anything else is a uh, part of it? See, your, your product has got its own USB, right? And some company, they purposefully keep a price at high, so that you know they can serve their customer data. And every the product has got its own differentiator, right? Why HP prices are high? Maybe because of its good service, maybe because of its good quality. Uh, good morning, sir. So this side. Good afternoon, sir. My yes. name is Kalash Sharma. I'm from EMS Ready Marketing. Um, and yes. Yes. so this side. Okay. Yeah. okay. So uh, my question is, uh, as he asked about the price and stuff, so uh, basically what uh, um, laptop and uh, electronic industry is doing it is basically on uh, working on an ingredient marketing and uh, in laptop industry every every company is using uh, Intel chips uh, Intel chip or uh, EMP. So working on that, how you manage your brand synergy with uh, comparison to your uh, supplier and how you manage your synergies with Intel and uh, for say AMD because uh, when you uh, take AMD as a processor it gives you better, um, uh, it is uh, better than Intel of course 
but uh, managing your brand synergies with Intel and 75% of your market share is because of the Intel. Well, yes, we do have a laptop uh, with uh, both the processors. We do have a laptop with the AMD, we do have a laptop, laptop with the Intel. So, price matters, right? The AMD will come cheaper, Intel will come uh, costier. So, for a different segment, there are different, you know, processors installed. Hello. Yeah, we know that. That is what I am asking you. How you manage your brand brand synergies with comparison to AMD as well as comparison to Intel? How you manage uh, Harold and Packer, Packer brand identity in uh, communication with Intel or in communication with an, uh, AMD? So, uh, you, you want to compare with the other uh, laptop manufacturers or you, you are comparing with the process? Uh, your own Harold and Packer. We oh, don't, don't, don't have our own processor. We are using Intel or AMD. Sir, I am talking, uh, you are using AMD number one. Mm -hmm. You are using Intel. So you have both the processors in your laptop. How you differentiate your brand identity in terms of AMD, in terms of Intel? Maybe then I am not getting your question right. As I said, because of the price of the differentiation, we are using both the processors. Because AMD comes cheaper and Intel comes costier. And to beat the market, we have to have both. I agree. Any other question? Director BITM to present a memento to our chief guest. 